I went to university for four years, medical school four years. I got an MPH. That was another year of my life. That was five years of invested time. And thousands of dollars, right? And we all know how much that costs, right? So thousands of dollars, five years of my time. And what was I getting for that investment exactly? I was getting a credential, two of them, an MD and an MPH, and that was valuable. But what about the learning that we associate with that credential? I mean, when you, when you have an MD, there's this implicit understanding that there's a certain amount of learning that, that is equivalent to what that credential means. And what, where was I getting that learning? And a lot of that learning was actually happening outside of the classroom. And so in terms of an investment, it made me really question what I was, what I was really paying money and time for. So I, I started asking a lot of my peers, you know, how do you feel? Do you feel like med school prepared us for, for life? And we're all attendings now. Was it, was it a good investment now that we can kind of look back uh, eight years and, and reflect on it? And by and large, a lot of people felt, you know, mixed about it. Some said, yeah, absolutely, you need that foundational knowledge. Others said, no, I don't think so. They're, I can't remember anything I learned in med school anyway, and I don't use any of that stuff. Really, I think residency and fellowship is what kind of prepared me for what I do today. And, and even more than that, what I do every day as an attending is what prepares me for my next day as an attending. And so I thought about this, and I thought, well, I, I really don't know the answer. I don't know if med school really adequately prepared me for, for what I do as an attending. But what I do know is I think it could have been better. Nobody takes an information piece in a vacuum. But that's how we teach people. We teach people in vacuums, in little discrete nuggets. And we don't teach this contextualization, which is so critical for all the steps down the road in terms of how we actually practice medicine. So going back to all this, how does Khan Academy fit in? We just saw the TED Talk, but how does this relate to some of the problems that we have? And I'm going to start with Sal Khan. So this is a picture of, uh, of Sal that's on our website. And he, for me, epitomizes a lot of what is right about teaching. So he's a fantastic educator. If you've watched his videos, they're very, very interesting and engaging. And there are a few key reasons why he's such a good teacher. When he teaches, he does it in a, in a very informal way. That's the first thing. He doesn't use jargon that's unnecessary. And there's actually a ton of data to suggest that a simple message that's, that's relayed is much more powerful and long-lasting than a message that's convoluted and hard to follow because your brain essentially kind of keeps taking breaks to kind of go figure out what you just said, and by the time you come back to the message, you've lost it. And so he, he really does a good job of staying on point and keeping it simple. And it's great because he also builds upon things that you already know to be true and says, look, it's a little bit like when you, when you do this and this happens, it's the same thing, it's the same analogy, just imagine that. So he kind of builds upon things you already know. It makes it very, very easy, and your brain can kind of easily follow along. So that's, that's one powerful thing that he does. Another thing that he does, and this is my favorite thing, is that he really forces you to take something that you think you know and pushes you further. I'll give you an example. So there's a video that he does on the sodium-potassium pump. And I watched this video simply because I thought it'd be kind of fun to watch him explain something in biology that I already understood. I thought, oh, let me just watch this video. I, already, I, I know how these pumps work, but let's see how he does it. So, uh, if, if you don't know, it's essentially three sodiums for two potassiums is the exchange, the exchange rate. And so he asks the question, what would happen to the membrane potential if that exchange rate was two to two instead of three to two? What would happen? So I was stumped. Gosh, I, I thought I understood this stuff. You know, I really thought I had a good understanding. What would happen to the membrane? Would it change? Would it go more negative, more positive? I don't know. And so I had to watch his next video to figure it out. And so I challenge you to, to figure this out yourself. I mean, we all deal with, on some level, sodium potassium pumps in, in whatever domain you do in medicine. And, and it's an interesting thought experiment. But that's what he does. He takes these things that you think you know and forces you to go a little deeper on them. And you'll never forget it because you really are forced to understand stuff that you thought you understood at some superficial level. So it's not simply telling you a fact three to two. It's actually challenging you to understand what would happen if you manipulated that fact? What, what would change? What are the implications of that manipulation? And so it is a really deep, intuitive understanding that you get. And what you do, and you don't even realize you're doing it, is that you start building connections. All of a sudden now, you're thinking, gosh, if you exchange, how does that affect, well, I guess it would affect concentrations. And if the concentrations, well, I guess that's nurse potential. And so you start going down this road, and you start building these fantastic connections, and you start needing knowledge to kind of figure out these, these natural riddles that, that he kind of poses to you. 
So it's, it's a fun exercise. It's a riddle, it's a puzzle, and you're forced to really learn the material if you're going through it. So this is kind of how we feel about teaching. We really feel like to, to get the connections, if you want people to make connections, you have to teach with connections in mind. And the way to do that is to say, look, it's connected to something you already know. Uh, here's a riddle to kind of get you thinking. And if you don't know the answer, you're going to have to make some connections to kind of figure it out. 